Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to study about fluoroquinolones and this is the last drug in our antibiotic group of series. So any further ado, let's get started. So fluoroquinolones act by inhibiting DNA kinase which is also called topoisomerase 2 and it has long post antimicrobial effect. Do you remember we studied about post antimicrobial effect in aminoglycosides as well. So do remember this these two group of drugs fluoroquinolones and aminoglycosides they are having long post antimicrobial effects. Now let's study the mechanism of which where does fluoroquinolones act okay. You see here fluoroquinolones acting on DNA gyrase enzyme. What does this DNA gyrase do? It uh, do the unwinding of two strands of DNA as you can see here in the picture okay. And the same enzyme when it is present in humans it is called topoisomerase 2 but when it is in an organism or in a bacteria it is called DNA gyrase but the action of both the enzyme is same. So classification fluoroquinolones are divided into three generations first second and third. First generation they are active against gram negative bacteria pay attention to this the spectrum of uh, each generation okay they are highly protein bound and short life as we will move from first to second to third the spectrum will increase in second generation they are active against gram negative and third generation they are active against gram negative and also against gram positive okay let's see the pharmacokinetics these group of drugs have good bioavailability but like tetracycline, multivalent cations interfere with absorption. Multivalent cations like uh, calcium, magnesium, okay, they interfere just like in tetracycline, it is also seen in fluoroquinolones. Norfloxacine has minimal oral bioavailability. Levofloxacine has maximum oral bioavailability. These are your MCQs, okay? You can directly score 4 marks if you just remember the name that which has maximum oral bioavailability and which has minimum, okay? Excretion of moxifloxacine and trovafloxacine is by hepatic metabolism and biliary excretion. Sparfloxacine and pefloxacin are excreted by both renal and hepatic root. All other drugs are excreted by kidney. These two have special points so do remember it regarding excretion. And probenicid inhibits the tubular secretion of these drugs. Dose adjustment is required in renal disease for all fluoroquinolones except pefloxacin, moxifloxacin and trovafloxacin. This is your mnemonic over here PMT okay pefloxacin, moxifloxacin and trovafloxacin. We don't require dose adjustment in renal diseases okay. Sparfloxacin, moxifloxacin and trovafloxacin have long half lives and so administered once daily. Sparfloxacin has longest half life among all the fluoroquinolones. This is also you need to remember which has longest half life that is parfloxacine. Okay, this is just an overview of fluoroquinolones. Okay, uh, see it is given by roots, it can be given orally as well as IV. Okay, mechanism we already studied by DNA gyrase and it is bactericidal, it kills the bacteria. Okay, now coming to the uses, we will study the uses in detail, but this is just a bird's eye view. Okay, so it is used for ophthalmic infections, infections of bone, joints and soft tissues, respiratory infections, inhaled anthrax or mycobacteria, okay, uh, GIT and abdominal infections, prostatitis, UTIs and in STDs like chlamydia, okay, adverse effect of which are, it is given over here. Okay, so uses, they have greatest activity against pseudomonas. Maximum is with C profloxacin. Now, these points are important for your MCQs. And this chart was just to give you an overview of the uses as well as the adverse effect, okay? Uh, C profloxacin is drug of choice for prophylaxis and treatment of anthrax 
ओके एंड फॉर प्रोफाइलेक्सिस ऑफ मैनिंगोकोकल मैनिंजाइटिस दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट लीवोफ्लॉक्सिसन इज यूज फॉर माइकोप्लाज्मा लीवोफ्लॉक्सिसन गैटीफ्लॉक्सिसन गैमीफ्लॉक्सिसन मॉक्सीफ्लॉक्सिसन आर कॉल्ड रेस्पायरेटरी फ्लोरोक्विनलॉन्स दे आर इफेक्टिव अगेंस्ट क्लेमाइडिया माइकोप्लाज्मा एंड लेजियोनेला ओके ऑल दीज ऑर्गेनिज्म कॉजेज रेस्पायरेटरी इन्फेक्शन सो दीज आर द फ्लोरोक्विनलॉन्स विच आर इफेक्टिव अगेंस्ट दैम and phenaphloxacin is a fluoroquinolone that has been recently approved for topical treatment of acute otitis externa caused by pseudomonas and staphylococcus toxicity we have already seen it gi distress is the most common side effect of fluoroquinolones this may cause cartilage problem so it is not given in patient younger than 18 years and and in pregnancy tendinitis resulting in tendon rupture phototoxicity sparfloxacin and getifloxacin prolongs the qt interval which means it causes arrhythmia moxifloxacin can cause hypoglycemia fluoroquinolones are contraindicated in epilepsy recently fda has issued warning regarding peripheral neuropathy caused by fluoroquinolones here you can see there is a history of fluoroquinolones so then in 13 fda issued warning about peripheral neuropathy in 2016 fda issued warning about disabling side effect of the tendons muscle joint nerves and central nervous system and in 2018 fda issued warning about significant decrease in blood sugar and certain mental health side effects okay decrease in blood sugars was uh, seen specifically with moxifloxacin okay so do remember it i hope this video was useful for you guys please give a thumbs up and share with your friends and do not forget to subscribe thank you